everyone. I'm Donna Chaco, and I'm here with Serenity and Health. And for those of you who are new to this, this is um, one of a series of conversations called Pop-Up Conversations, when I, I get to meet and talk with folks who, who in their life, personal or professional, have some significant uh, linkage between faith and health of various topics. And uh, this week we have a guest. I'm very happy to introduce you to Evelyn Sherwood. Evelyn, hello. Hi, Hi Donna. Good to see you. Good to hear you. So happy you're here. So Evelyn hails from Kokomo, Indiana, which I had yeah. never heard of, but it sounds like it must be a great place. And uh, she mentioned that there might be a few glitches with the um, internet today because they're having heavy winds. So if we if we go in and out, that will be the explanation. So, um, well, I met Evelyn through a, a multiple chain online connection <laughs> thing with networking that I have been doing, which has just been a thrill to meet interesting people like Evelyn. And um, she has a, a story of, of being working in pastoral ministry for many, many years and is uh, active as a blogger and speaker, sometimes with very large audiences in, in, her, in her ministry. And uh, she'll tell us more about her, her main thrust, but um, she always finds herself offering hope for the weary. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of weary people out there, especially now. Um, the topic today is uh, moving beyond COVID, because Evelyn is going to share with us uh, about herself and her ministry, but also how both she and her husband ended up very ill with COVID in the hospital at the same time, and how uh, how her faith um, and and her recovery were linked, and how that all went down. So, Evelyn. Yeah. Oh, tell us, tell us what, tell us first about, you know, who you are and what you do in Kokomo, Indiana, and just so we get to know you a little bit. All right. Um, gladly. Well, first of all, um, let me just say, Donna, thank you for having me here. I'm just so excited to be able to share uh, with everyone just how gracious and faithful God is, no matter what our circumstances and where we are. Uh, he meets us where we are. And uh, this is definitely a day where I get to share how he met my husband and I in some very difficult times. But um, so let me um, start with telling you that I grew up in a minister's home and I don't know, I just fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with the church and, and knew um, pretty early on that uh, ministry would be a vocation for me and that God was calling me to marry a minister and serve alongside and work in the church with him. And so um, Naturally to me, that felt like I should go to Bible college because I would meet someone that probably had a like-minded um, passion as I did. And, um, and I did. The college I went to, I um, met my sweetie there and we have now been married. This June will be 37 years. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, it has been quite an adventure. Um, we have two mar adult married children and they have blessed us with eight grandchildren, ages 12 on down. So um, that- Can you interrupt one second? Is that what the one through eight behind you are? I've been studying those pictures. Actually, yes, it is. Um, when, cool. when the grandkids come, they each have their own hook to put their backpacks and their, their coats and everything. Um, I've done a lot of work around the house to let them know they're very welcome here. And, and this me casa, you casa kind of thing. So, they're lucky grandkids to have you. Yeah, and we are so blessed by them and the joy that they bring. Um, so yeah, we, um, so our, my husband and I have actually been in ministry ever since we got married. We both have just been, whether it was, we were youth pastors or we've been children's pastors, we've been associate pastors. Um, we have done family ministry, and of course, I've done women's ministry, worship leading, and we are currently um, senior pastors at a church here in Kokomo, and we've been here, uh, it'll be 25 years in April that we celebrate our anniversary with them, and it has been a wonderful place um, to be and serve and let our children grow up here, and uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the backstory and what we're doing and what we're about here. Very good. Definitely 
doing it partner style, it sounds like the whole way, even getting sick partner style. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Some things we might be better off not doing as partners. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. So um, I life was going on. You're doing your ministry. Um, I know you've been very busy with other pursuits. Uh, yes. Writing a book proposal, starting your book, uh, your blog, and spreading your message uh, around. And busy as you're busy doing all of these things, then comes last November. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um kind of back up three years ago, um, I've always had this passion to um, bring a message of hope to the weary hearted. And to be honest with you, I remember even as a teenager, if kids were struggling in school or needed someone to talk to, they always found me. Um, sometimes as an adult, I could be shopping at a grocery store and just smile and say hi to a stranger in the produce section. And 30 minutes later, where I know their story and we're praying, <laughs> that aisle has become a sanctuary. So somehow I, I knew that there was a meshing that God was doing of um, getting that message out to hope to those who are weary, because we all get weary, even when we know um, God is there, he's with us, and we have scriptures and stuff. Um, hard times come and we forget. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've always felt like that would end up being in a book format as well. Um, going back to fourth grade, I, I've had a desire to write and I'm always pinning and journaling and writing things out. And then three years ago, um, I felt that nudge in my heart that I had a green light. You know, kids are raised, they're out of the house, things were settling to a point and uh, felt God say, go. And so I did. And in October of 2018, knowing nothing about technology and blogging, um, I've got some young girls in the church that are college age and young 20, 30 cents knew a lot more than I did. And they um, helped me navigate some very techie waters and got a blog started. Um, I start hope for the journey, but it's under my name. And then I have um, an email devotional weekly that I send out called Hope for the Journey as well, which is just inspirational thoughts and things God's teaching me through everyday life. Um, and so that's been going on. And then um, two years ago, um, actually about this time, uh, when I got another nudge, um, like start writing that book. And um, I knew I would need help knowing about the publishing world and navigating those waters and what it even looks like to get that out. So connect it with where we are now connected commonly through Chad R. Allen and Book Camp. Yes. And, um, and because of his coaching, I've completed my first book proposal, which is what I need to start pitching to agents and publishers. And that's very, where very big step. Yeah. Yes. And we should say anybody who has any interest in writing and wants to learn more or start the process, um, look up Chad R. Allen. Or is yes. it just chadallen.com? Anyway, Chad R. Allen. Chad R. Allen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you'll you'll get some help. Yeah, you won't regret it. He's he takes it and makes it um, doable in small chunks and very clear how to take that journey. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So um, I guess going back to your question then, um, last um, October, November. Well, my husband the year before that had um, I, I guess this is kind of important to the story. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Tell us that part. Yeah. So in the fall of 2019, my husband had been exposed to um, a concentrated amount of aspergillus mold. And um, he ended up in the hospital with severe lung damage. And I almost lost him then. Um, but God gave us just this really amazing infectious disease doctor and pulmonologist and pulled this team together. And, um, you know, he was, it was a long journey. And so that was like in October, November, 2019, then a pandemic and that we hear about in 2020. And we immediately called and said, what does this mean for him? Because he's still got a long recovery from the mold and the damage. Um, and they were like, you have, you have to quarantine <laughs> and he can't get it. They just said, he cannot get this. Yeah. And um, so I was working um, in 
a suburb of Indianapolis as an administrator in an office. And um, they were very gracious to let me begin working remotely. Um, and I would go in once a week just to exchange paperwork so I could come home and do all my inputting. Um, but we were really, really cautious. Um, and even if we did have to go out for doctor appointments and things like that, always masked up, always. Mm -hmm. But we started ordering our groceries in and just, you know, limited with um, limited contact. Um, and we did really good and thought we were protecting him. <laughs> and he had gone to the doctor. He had gone to the infectious disease doctor. And they did another scan, looked at his lungs and said, you know what, you are looking great. Two weeks after that, I get a phone call that someone I had spent five minutes with, with no symptoms, had just tested positive for COVID. And we were like, God, we were doing so good. We were, you know, we thought we were through mm -hmm. this and um, we were not, we were just beginning. So uh, um, that was on a Friday that I got the call. By Sunday, my husband was symptomatic already, which we thought that was ironic. I was the one exposed, but apparently because of his immune system, he just got everything from me. And then um, on November 3rd, I um, was exhibiting my first symptoms. So we fought it at home for a week. I mean, taking all the supplements they told us to take, lots of fluids, but, um, and you know, some people, they get it and they have our, our we know friends and families that have gotten and said it was kind of like a little cold, mm -hmm. a little infection, um, but it didn't last. Um, for us, it was the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> so anything that you could get with COVID, um, any symptom that was there, we, we had it. Yeah. Um, so. So, and um, I know he went to the hospital first and then he a few days later had to go as well, right? Yeah, so we we called um, the infectious disease doctor and said um, he has been exposed and immediately they did a test and he tested positive. And um, so they stayed with us throughout the whole, we were calling them like every day and saying, what do we need to look for? When does he need to go to the hospital? Um, you know, when can we wait it out at home? And so he had already been to the, he got it on Sunday by Wednesday. He was at the emergency room the first time. And then they sent him home with some other things. Um, by the following Sunday night, we both knew. Um, and his oxygen levels just kept plummeting. Um, yes. He was so weak, he could barely walk. Neither one of us at that point were even able to eat and keep food down. Um, right. We were so weak. Um, so... Um, we called the doctor, they said, get to the ER, and we did, and later found out, had I not taken him that night, he would not be with me today. Yeah. Wow, so he must have had a pretty low oxygen. He did. Well, so, so uh, what was the total duration of the, uh, of the hospital, Evelyn? About a week, or was it longer? Um, for me, it was a week. He went in, in on a Sunday, and then the the that Wednesday afterwards, my oxygen kept plummeting, and I was getting. And I, no offense, but I'm one who I don't go to the doctor very often. I, you know, I just don't, I don't wrestle with anything. I'm a very healthy person. I've never struggled. Um, I think the last time I was in the hospital when I gave birth to my children. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I knew that it was time to go, and so. Um, I drove myself there, even that. I'm like, God, I don't know how I made it to the hospital. I just didn't want to expose anybody else, even yeah. in EMT, to what I was going through. So um, so for him, it was 10 days in the hospital, and it was a week for me. Yeah. Um, he was in ICU, and I was on what they had designated then as the COVID wing. Oh, my goodness. And I know that you guys had all the major treatments and all the complications that can happen. Um, and uh, I, I can't imagine what that was like, separate rooms, not knowing, no visitors. Um, what, you know, your whole ministry has been being there for the weary hearted. So how is it, and, and, and not just taking yourself, not just you yourself helping the weary, but uh, in a way taking Jesus to the weary. So how, how is it, how was it when, 
the two of you together were weary? How did you, were you able to rely on those same um, forces, so to speak, in the same way? Yeah, that was really interesting. Um, I just remember um, dropping him off at the at the ER and watching him walk that long corridor yeah. into the hospital and sitting there sobbing, wondering, God, will I see him again? Did I get him here on time? Yeah. Is he going to be okay? And when will I see him if he is okay? Because at that point, I knew I would not be able to go make a visit like we normally would with the sick, mm -hmm. you know, like we had done hundreds of times over the years. Um, and so then when, you know, a few days later, I'm pulling in and I'm walking the long corridor um, and I'm going, God, how are we, how are we going to do this? I don't know. And, and I think at that point though, we were both so weak that um, things that I would normally try to process through and try to figure out um, became these prayers that were just tears or silent whispers in my heart because it was exhausting to even talk. Mm -hmm. So my prayers became God help. Um, I don't know what to do, God. I, I don't know what the end of it is. And um, I remember uh, there was a pivotal moment, though, between dropping my husband and off and me going to the hospital. After I dropped him off, I pulled into the drive and there was a song um, by, um, I think it was Mercy Me playing on the radio called Even If. Mm -hmm. And the song is like, um, even if. Let's see, let me go back. I, think I, I wrote it down because I figured I'd forget it. I know you're able. I know you can save through the fire with your loving hands. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Mm -hmm. I, I was at this questioning with God, like, God, did I, you know, did I get him here? Is he going to make it? Lord, please. Like in my heart, I was just bursting with please and pleads to God. And um, I sat in the car with my head slumped over the steering wheel, eyes streaming down my face, just crying out. And then this song plays. And I hear God speak in my heart, not audible, but in my heart, I heard, if I don't have, will you still love me? Will you still worship me? <clears throat> and at that point, the tears just became like these little geysers coming out of my eyes. And as weak as I was, I, I lifted up my hands and I said, you are God. Yeah. I will trust you to walk us through this. Even if it doesn't turn out the way I want it to God, you are still God and you are still good. Yeah. And I think that was a pivotal moment for me for the duration um, that quite honestly, we're still in a healing process. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that takes your burden and your worries and all of that and kind of take them off your shoulders that got to make your load lighter uh, 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 somehow for that, for that moment <laughs> there were many moments in the hospital i i re i saw because um evelyn posted things um once in a while during the illness um and she shared them with me mm -hmm. the things she wrote and so this was another song that you you said. I don't know the name of the song. But I, you, um, you said you the playlist played. Lord, you are my song when I don't have a melody. Lord, you are my strength when life's troubles leave me weak, and your tears tears have turned to sobs. But I, that's just beautiful. Lord, you are my song when I don't have a melody. You you didn't have the prayers. You didn't have the words, but somehow it was in your heart. Yeah, yeah. And they, and I think during that duration in the hospital, I remember, you know, my husband and I were both um, tethered to oxygen. Um, he was in much worse shape than I was, although the infectious disease doctor, which that was something we were grateful for. He already had a doctor uh -huh. in his, you know, little, um, I don't know, toolbox, so to speak. Yeah. And, um, and when she found out I was there, she's like, I'm taking care of your wife. <clears throat> and every day she came in and checked on me. Sometimes she brought me lunch, but um, yeah, it was just, he, um, he was two steps away from being put on a ventilator. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they never had to go that far. That first night we were there, we, um, that for my husband on Sunday night, for me on Wednesday, they started the process of getting the plasma mm -hmm. and the remdesivir um, treatment for us. So we, um, he received two um, units of plasma. I got one. Um, and so that really jump started our healing. Oh but um, I remember um, that first night, just when I had to go to the bathroom, I mean, it was just like five steps from my bed. And I remember clutching the front of my gown, tears streaming down my face going, God, it's your breath in my lungs that gives me life. I don't know why I go through each and every day, not remembering that I I move and I live and I breathe because you breathe that life in me. But right now, more than ever, I'm aware that I need your breath in my lungs because right. I don't know if I can make it five steps to that bathroom. Right. And, um, you know, you made another comment in here somewhere uh, where you said um, that that realization of how you know, fragile life is and how you just don't know and we don't have control in it. And, you know, all we have is this moment and yeah. it's such a, a powerful lesson. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people um, go through illnesses. Mm -hmm. and obviously, not everybody uh, has a, a, not everybody's Christian. People have other wonderful faiths and yeah. I'm, uh, rely on their God. I, I'm always just curious how, how it works, um, like if you think God helped you to heal or, or where you, what your faith, do you think it made a difference for you? Um, for me, it did. Um, <clears throat> and I think because um, I was stripped of everything that was familiar to me that I hung on to as my strength. Mm -hmm. um, physically, I had nothing to give. Um, all the things that I did and gave to other people for all these years was not available in myself anymore. Um, like for me to do it, <clears throat> my husband couldn't do it. Um, and so that, I think when you're stripped of everything that is familiar, everything you know, mm -hmm. you realize what you truly believe. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it went back to, God, you're the only one who's been with me through everything I've ever faced, all my joys, all my sorrows, um, the loss of my mom, you know, a few years back and, um, you know, helping my dad through some congestive heart failure stuff. And he's still in the middle of that as well. Um, so we've seen a lot of suffering in our life, but God has been the one constant. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that's where my faith lies. And so I dug back into his word, um, and said, God, you know, honestly, this isn't what I would have chosen for my life, but it's where I'm finding you at a deeper place. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I will walk this road with you hand in hand. And, and the days that I can't even walk it, you, you will carry me. Mm -hmm. And I found him to be um, the Prince of Peace that he says he is. Um, yeah, that's you know, like, so, yeah. We know there's a lot written um, by uh, scientists as they study um, factors that um, predict better health in populations mm -hmm. and participation in a faith or a church mm -hmm. is one of those factors that overall tends to predict for better health. Yeah. And um, some of that's God, but another part that then I know you experience it from reading some of your stuff is, is just that, that the community. Now you can have a community other than a church community, but uh, that, that sense of a faith-based church community must have just been amazingly um, therapeutic for you. Yeah, it, yes. And actually I <laughs> made a note to acknowledge that as, as you and I talked because um, there were so many times we, like I said, we knew there was nothing. There was no, I couldn't read. It was exhausting. I couldn't pray. It was exhausting. Um, but then I would get a text. So just a scripture verse that mm -hmm. someone had said, I thought this might encourage you, um, you know, and someone else would um, send me a link to some of those songs that I hung to. Mm -hmm. um, other people would just send a picture or, 
a word of encouragement or just a thought about you. And it goes back to, there is a passage in Proverbs that says anxiety to a man's heart weighs him down, mm. but a good word makes him glad. Yeah. And um, so what I have done and what I've started since I've been home is I got a journal and it's my remembrance journal or gratitude journal, whatever you want to call. And I have started physically writing down every word that was spoken that was word of encouragement, every scripture that was shared, every um, story that was told of, you know, my uncle had this and, you know, and here's where he is now, uh, you know, so um, yeah. That's great. And that's, that's another one of those things that has been scientifically studied. The, mm -hmm. um, the value in terms of health, in mm -hmm. terms of sense of well-being, in, sense, in terms of happiness, uh, of gratitude. Yes. And it's okay if it's a, a formal, I am going to do this and write a journal and I'm going to, it, it's okay. It doesn't have to just like spring up you you can just plan to be grateful and it still has the same effect a, a gratitude prayer it's a beautiful thing I, I i i think god gives us these health bonuses somehow yes we yeah. bring positive um vibes into the world it's all very fascinating it was donna it was really interesting one one thing that came uh, word of encouragement that came to us was a young man that had been in our church as a young child and um, then went into service and grew up, went his own way and really doesn't necessarily follow faith right now or anything like that. But he sent a message to me and he said, um, Evelyn, I'm so sorry to hear what's going on with you and Pastor Steve. And he said, you know, I, I'm not really a, a praying person but for you guys, I am praying. And I just <laughs> wept when I read it. And I was like, God heard his prayers. Yeah. Oh, you know, so beautiful and encouraging meant, meant the world to me. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. The, the, the benefit we can offer to others by the, a kind word or a thought or a phone call or something yeah. or food, as I know you all yes. eat a lot of food at the front door, <laughs> which is wonderful which is wonderful. So um, all, all these years, you know, you have um, things that you offer people for mm -hmm. advice, guidance, mm -hmm. support. And I, I wonder now what you would say, having gone through all this, what, what, I don't know, what main things you learned, what main, I don't know, suggestions, advice you might offer to oh, our listeners. Well, you know, quite honestly, I'm, I'm making a list of those things. I'm, I'm still, lessons are still popping up. I'm, I'm like, you have your pop-up conversations. Yes. I'm still having these pop-up lessons with God. But um, there are some beautiful um, things that right from the beginning, I knew God um, was doing in my own heart and life. Um, one of them was um, my view of suffering. Um, we all face times that are difficult and hard and pull us, it, it really rips us out of the womb of our comfort. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to rush back into the womb. And God is wanting oftentimes to transform our hearts, to grow our character, um, to help us to be stronger, more courageous um, for our faith to grow. Um, and so I'm learning, I don't have to rush the seasons that I'm in. Yeah, I like that. You don't have to rush the seasons that you're in. Yeah, yeah I can, I can sit with them, even though they're uncomfortable, because I know who sits with me. Mm -hmm. And um, just to let, let it do its work in us. Um, you know, farmers and stuff, they have their seasons of tilling the ground, planting, and they can't rush any of them because their crops, it will impact how the, the, the fruit of what they're planting. Right. So that would be one thing. Um, the other thing is, um, and I, and I, this is a lesson I just wrestled with yesterday. Um, I was because, because of COVID, um, I, I am battling blood clots in my lungs. Um, I'm taking medicine for it. Um, two months after being out of the hospital, I had a massive hair loss. So 
my beautiful full curly locks have gone to fine thin wispies right now. Um, doable, but you know, for uh, it's important to me. My hair's always been an issue. My my best friends will tell you how I feel about my curly hair. Um, yeah, your, your your hair is beautiful. It still looks fine, but oh, I, I know what you're talking about from those other pictures. Well, curly, full. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was kind of wrestling with that going, God, I just, you know, and the energy, I want to be able to play with my grandkids. Like I have in the past. I mean, we run and hike and are very physical. And so many of those things are not there in my life yet. And, um, and then I just, God was just reminding me though, where I've come from. Um, three weeks ago, I was not able to do long walks or anything like that. And now my doctor's given me the okay to do more concentrated walks and I'm up to a mile and I'm like, oh, that's improvement. So my tip would be don't get stuck and begrudging where you're not. Make sure you offer gratitude for where you've come from mm -hmm. and, and, and where you're heading because you're not there yet, but you're getting there. Every step matters as Chad often tells us yes. um, in book camp. So I, I think those are some um, really important lessons that I'm learning. And also the importance of rest. Honestly, prior to, um, to COVID, I was on the, the treadmill that we often talk about, that hamster wheel that's running and running and running. And I would go from, you know, working full time to coming home and cramming in some writing or, or a, a class on writing and then running off to church and like there was always something running, running, running all the time. There was no margin to stop and breathe and to pause. And I'm learning the importance of the pause mm -hmm. that my, my soul needs that my mind needs that my body needs that. Right. And right. so I don't ever want to backtrack on that lesson right there. You got that, you got that huh? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's good. Oh my goodness. I mean, you know, the whole world has been through COVID and all of us have to move through it, beyond it. And uh, you had to do that in a real concrete way. But those yeah. those pieces of advice hold for all of us, for all these all these circumstances. Yes. And um, because it, looking how far we've come, it's gonna be a, a while before, before we really, really get back to where we were exactly if, I don't think it will ever be quite the same. Some way, some things will be better because we will have learned just like you learned, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Was talking, I was talking, Donna, with some friends um, yesterday. Um, um, one lady in particular, and she lives out in the region that you're from, mm -hmm. and she, um, they're getting their vaccine. So for the first time in a year, she's going to be able to take a long trip and visit her family. And one of the things she said is, I should feel overjoyed that this is happening, but there's a bit of me that feels a little anxious. Oh, yes. And, and that's one of the things that I think, whether you've had COVID or it, it, it's just what we have been in our whole world, this pandemic, have we've been in a place where it's changed the way we approach things. And there's always like this little nagging shadow following us, every situation we're in, every decision we make. Right. And so, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I'm working through as well is like, I know that I will never go back. Um, I will never be the same um, as this point in history has changed me. But uh, what should I, what can I learn? I think that's the question I'm continuously ask, asking myself even if life never goes back to what I consider to be normal, what did I learn through this season? Yes. And then how can I carry that into the next season right. and, and be stronger and be more courageous and love better, love deeper, mm -hmm. um, offer kindness um, and see the world in a better way. Right. Right. Well, you, and you, you've shared some valuable specific um, ways of, for us to, look at things as we move to the future. Yeah. Um, we're getting near the end of the time. I want everybody to know that Evelyn uh, is online at Evelyn Sherwood, is it dot .com or dot .net or something? Dot .com. Dot .com. Mm -hmm. And 
um, on the show notes, by the way, I'm going to uh, include all these things about Evelyn and her uh, bio and her website and her blog. And she has some uh, also things that you can sign up for to get free. And the, I really liked the third one. What was it called? Three. Um, it's three steps. Yeah. And I think I had it too. Three steps to finding God in my ordinary yeah. days. Yeah, that was good. That's like a good prayer guide. You could look up and just kind of reflect and step yeah. slowing down to uh, reflect on who we are and where we're going and yes. why and all those things, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you and Steve are recovering and that you, you, you know, you have your, your family and your church community there to back you up when you uh, have moments of weakness and you have your faith uh, above all. Yeah. So, and you have the, you, you have the gift of um, a meaning and a ministry in your life as much as you're able to do it. That, that just is a, a, a wonderful gift that you have. Um, you can add that to your gratitude thing that you have. That is a beautiful thing that to have a purpose in your life. And yeah, you obviously have a gift. I can just tell from listening to you and seeing what you have written and, and things. So it's, well, thank you, Donna. Great. It's great. Um, I felt like asking the listeners, anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One day we'll, I'll, we'll get to um, a live. Evelyn and I were chatting now. We have to branch out and do like a live uh, interview or something that's that's coming right yeah <laughs> yes yes it is I think we should <laughs> all right well I think we said everything I wanted to say and um all the details like I said will be on the the show notes and uh Evelyn we will stay in touch I just want to thank you so much for for sharing your story I I think it 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 was meaningful to me. I think it will be helpful to other people to, you know, see the inside track of how uh, a church family got through this. Um, yeah. And uh, I wish you the best. Enjoy this wonderful springtime. <laughs>